The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. One of the greatest mysteries in life is the question, what happens when you die? Do the good people immediately go to heaven? Do unrepentant sinners go to a burning hellfire when they die? One of the most frightening doctrines taught by various religions is the teaching of an ever-burning hellfire where the wicked right now are being tormented, and those sinners who die in the future will also burn forever. The common idea of hell was popularized in the famous poem by Dante Alighieri, La Divina Commedia, or The Divine Comedy. It was written between 1302 and 1321 when Alighieri died. His poem consists of three parts, Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso, or Hell, Purgatory, and Paradise. His vivid description of souls writhing in agony colors the beliefs of millions even to this day. Many intelligent people see those images as unfair, illogical, and fiction. My friends, how can you know the truth? This book, the Holy Bible, gives you the answers, and the answers are probably quite different from what you've been taught. There is hope for many of your friends and family you may have mistakenly thought were lost forever. You need to know the comforting truth. Think of all the billions who have ever lived. Was there a purpose for them? Will they have a future hope? What is the truth? Is death the end? Is there life after death? If there is, what kind of life will it be? Are the tombstones somewhat misleading if they indicate the deceased person is really in the grave? Is that person actually in heaven? Is that person actually in a burning hellfire? What is the truth about hell? Is there an ever-burning hellfire? And if there is, who is now suffering in that hellfire? You need to know the truth. What does your Bible say about an ever-burning hellfire? Is hell just an invention of fiction writers? Or is there a real hell? Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. Many non-religious people believe that life ends at death. On the other hand, many religious people believe that when the body dies, the soul goes to heaven or hell. Still others look to the resurrection as their only hope. Some die tragic deaths from hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, or earthquakes. Many die of the major diseases or health problems of our day. Others die in war or from oppressive dictatorships. Thousands die in auto accidents or in other kinds of mishaps. Some live to a good old age and die in peace. Will all of these individuals live again? Are all the good people who died in heaven? Are all the bad people in hell? Is there an ever-burning hell that is tormenting billions of sinners right now? My friends, you need to know the truth. What happens when you die? What does your Bible say? As a minister officiating at funerals over the years, I've observed those widows, widowers, and other surviving family members comforted by the truth of the Bible. They know their Bible enough to trust in the promised resurrection from the dead. On the other hand, I've seen the mental anguish of those who thought one of their unsaved relatives was now suffering the torments of hell. How sad! that such anguish based on false information is totally unnecessary. What do most people believe about life after death? According to the Pew Research Center's 2014 Religious Landscape Study, 72% of Americans believe in the existence of heaven as a place where people who have led good lives are eternally rewarded. About 58% believe in hell as a place where people who have led bad lives and die without being sorry are eternally punished. 
Those numbers have not changed much since Pew's 2007 survey, in which 74% expressed belief in heaven and 59% in hell. However, among religious nuns, N-O-N-E-S, those who say their religion is nothing in particular, along with atheists and agnostics, just 37% believe in heaven and only 27% in hell. My friends, you need to know what your Bible reveals about life after death. After all, millions of people around the world die every year. According to the CIA World Factbook, about 108 people around the world died per minute in 2015, or 1.8 deaths every second. That works out to more than 56 million deaths in 2015, about 7.8 for every thousand people. More than 2.5 million people died in the United States. 10.3 million died in China, the world's most populous nation. The Ukraine, part of the former Soviet Union, saw a death rate above 14 per thousand, as did the tiny African nation of Lesotho. Tiny Kuwait on the Arabian Peninsula had only a death rate of just 2.18 per thousand. What happened to all these millions of people who died? Did they continue to live in another world? Is death the end? Is there life after death? When someone dies, does he or she immediately go to heaven or hell? Or are all the dead waiting in their graves for the resurrection? On today's program, we'll answer those questions, and we'll be offering you an inspiring free booklet titled, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? This booklet reveals from the Bible the inspiring hope we have beyond death. It explains the resurrection from the dead and the amazing white throne judgment described in Revelation 20. Relatively few professing Christians understand the inspiring truth of the white throne judgment. You need to understand. This free booklet will give you comfort and encouragement from your own Bible. and It'll give you hope for the future. You need this inspiring booklet. You need the truth about hell and what happens when you die. Just request the booklet on the only day of salvation. You can order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can call the number on the screen. Just ask for the booklet on salvation. As we've seen, about 58% of Americans believe in hell as a place where people who have led bad lives and die without being sorry are eternally punished. But what really is hell? The word hell in your Bible actually has three different meanings. From the biblical perspective, it's three different places or conditions. First, Sheol in the Hebrew, or Hades in the Greek, means pit or grave. Second, Gehenna means the Valley of Hinnom. Symbolically, it refers to fiery judgment. And thirdly, Tartarus, which signifies the confining of fallen angels. So you see, to use the word hell for all three meanings does not accurately communicate the truth of the Bible. You need to ask, what particular hell are you talking about? We'll discuss the truth about biblical hell in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you our free eye-opening booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? This booklet will give you a real understanding of hell and the afterlife. Without realizing it, Millions of professing Christians believe in a God who is unfair. You might ask your minister or priest this question. If the missionary had an accident in the remote jungles and the natives died without hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, are they now burning in hell forever? That's the kind of unfair God many believe in. But my friends, that is not the God of your Bible. Your Bible reveals that millions, if not billions of people, will have their very first opportunity for salvation in the white throne judgment described in Revelation 20 verses 11 and 12. You need this vital booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy. Just ask for the booklet on salvation. It will give you hope and encouragement. You would also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. You can also find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Tomorrow's World. 
For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-0531. That number again is 1-800-236-0531. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. On today's program, we're discussing the question, is there a real hell? There are many different ideas, concepts, and doctrines about hell. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary gives this secondary definition, quote, a place or state of misery, torment, or wickedness. War is hell, a quote by W.T. Sherman, end of quote. Billions of people around the world experience their own hell from the consequence of their sins. As it tells us here in Galatians 6, verse 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Many religions do not believe in eternal death. They believe that sinners will have eternal life in an ever-burning hellfire. What is the truth? Is there a real hell? What does your Bible reveal? In the King James translation of the Bible, the Hebrew word often translated hell is Sheol, which simply means pit or grave. It does not mean a place of ever burning fire. The New International Version of the Bible translates the Hebrew word Sheol as grave and never translates Sheol as hell. So if we ask the question, who is burning in hell? If we mean Sheol, the pit, or the grave, the answer is no one. In the New Testament, there are three Greek words translated hell, and each has a different meaning. They are Hades, Gehenna, and Tartarus. The Greek word Hades also means grave or pit, as does the Hebrew word Sheol. It does not mean a place of fire. So when someone says the word hell, it could simply mean, based on the Bible, the grave not an ever-burning fire. In fact, both the New King James Version and the NIV, as well as other more up-to-date translations, often leave the Greek word Hades untranslated. Be sure to underline those words in your Bible as you study this subject. Listen, the word Gehenna refers to the fire that will destroy the soul. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 10, verse 28. Matthew 10 and verse 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, or Gehenna fire. Young's literal translation states it this way, but fear rather him who is able both soul and body to destroy in Gehenna. My friends, let's understand. Jesus states that the soul and body will be destroyed in Gehenna fire. Do you believe him? If the soul and body are destroyed, they do not live forever in torment. They cease to exist. Later in the program, we'll see just when this punishment for the wicked takes place in Gehenna fire. We briefly discussed three original words translated as the word hell in your Bible. The fourth word translated hell in the Bible is based on the Greek word Tartarus. This denotes a condition of restraint and it does not apply to humans, but to fallen angels. Notice 2 Peter 2 and verse 4. God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Here is the explanation given in an expository dictionary of biblical words by W. E. Vine. Quote, the verb Tartaru translated cast down to hell in 2 Peter 2 verse 4 
signifies to consign to Tartarus, which is neither Sheol, nor Hades, nor Hell, but the place where those angels whose special sin is referred to in that passage are confined to be reserved under judgment, the region is described as pits of darkness in the Revised Version. This particular hell, Tartarus in the Greek, is reserved for the angels who sinned, Satan and his demons. But what will be the judgment for those human beings who never converted to Christianity? We'll answer that question in the next part of our program, but first I'd like to offer you this astounding free booklet that will give hope when hope may have been lost. It's titled, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? Are your lost relatives right now burning in hell? This booklet will give you a surprising answer from your Bible. You need the biblical truth about hell and the afterlife, so be sure to request your free copy. Call now. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. God has a wonderful plan of salvation. He's giving human beings the opportunity to learn right from wrong, truth from error, and life from death. Will many of those who died from the actions of a sinful life have opportunity to learn from those lessons? Yes, they will, in the white throne judgment described in Revelation 20, verses 11 and 12 in your Bible. My friends, it's God's purpose to give everyone who has ever lived a genuine, fair opportunity to be a part of His divine family for all eternity. He's made that purpose plain in 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. My friends, let's understand. There are three general resurrections. The first general resurrection from the dead is to immortal life at the return of Jesus Christ. The second general resurrection from the dead is to physical life in the white throne judgment. This second resurrection is a resurrection to judgment. That's when billions of so-called unsaved humans will face judgment. As it states in Hebrews 9, verse 27, it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. When does this white throne judgment take place? Turn in your Bible to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Here we see that faithful Christians will live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Let's read that inspiring section in Revelation 20, verse 5. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years." Now, if there is a first resurrection, there must be a second resurrection. That's what it tells us in Revelation 20, verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. My friends, it could include your friends or relatives whom you thought were lost forever. Just think, what will happen to all those billions of people who will not be in the first resurrection? Consider the history of the world. In the past 6,000 years, billions of people from countries all over the world have lived and died. The vast majority have never even heard the name of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter plainly stated in Acts 4, verse 12, Nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So what will happen to the billions of people who never heard His name? What kind of judgment will these billions of people face in the second general resurrection? Our free booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? will give you more detail than we have time for on this program. Be sure to request your inspiring free copy. If you have your Bible, turn to one of the most inspiring, amazing, and encouraging truths of your Bible, Revelation 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and Him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. This is the resurrection of judgment. And books, in the Greek, Biblia, meaning the books of the Bible, 
were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Yes, billions of people will have their first opportunity for salvation to be saved from eternal death. The book of life will be open to them during a lifetime of this judgment period. Who will be in that white throne judgment? Perhaps many of your friends and relatives will have a wonderful opportunity to repent of their sins and be a part of God's family for all eternity. Who else will be in that judgment? Jesus mentions several who will be given gracious consideration in the judgment. This may be very surprising to you. Will those wicked sinners in ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, who were destroyed by eternal fire, as it states in Jude 7, be in the white throne judgment? Notice in passing that the eternal fire that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is not burning today. Jesus stated this in Matthew 10 and verse 15. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. My friends, thank God that His plan of salvation is so much more fair and loving than the unfair depictions of billions tormented in a fiery hell because they never even had a chance to hear the name of Jesus Christ. However, at the end of that judgment period, those who refuse to obey God, those who have sealed their character as evil, will be thrown into the lake of fire. What will happen to them? We'll answer that question in the conclusion of our program. But first, I want to give you another opportunity to request our amazing free booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? The surprising truth of your Bible gives hope for the masses of humanity who never had a chance for salvation. This free booklet will give you the biblical references about the white throne judgment, future salvation, the resurrections, and the truth about hell. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy. Just ask for the booklet on salvation. You can order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. You would also find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Tomorrow's World. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-0531. That number again is 1-800-236-0531. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. On today's program, We've seen that the Bible contains four different words with different meanings that are translated into the English word hell. Only one of them refers to fiery judgment. So what will happen to those who reject God's grace and salvation? God will destroy the incorrigibly wicked in the lake of fire. As we saw earlier, there are three general resurrections from the dead. The first general resurrection from the dead is to immortal life. The second general resurrection from the dead is to physical life. This physical resurrection, the second resurrection, is a resurrection to judgment. That's when billions of so-called unsaved humans will face judgment. The third general resurrection is to eternal punishment, total destruction and eternal death in the lake of fire. God is just. He states in Hebrews 10 and verse 30, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. The wicked will be tormented as they stand before the lake of fire. Then all the wicked will be cast into the lake of fire and burned up, as it tells us in Revelation 21, verse 8. They will live no longer. 
This is the second death from which there is no resurrection, as it tells us in Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, that's eternal death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, my friends, there is a real hellfire that will encompass the earth, as it tells us in 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. That will take place at the end of the white throne judgment and will totally destroy forever the incorrigibly wicked in the second death from which there is no resurrection. But the good news is, no one right now is burning in the mythical hellfire envisioned by pagans and false religions. Let's understand. The incorrigibly wicked will face fiery judgment in the future lake of fire. My friends, we all must take warning. You will not want to go into the lake of fire. If you strongly desire to change your life, if you want to repent of your sins and be baptized according to Acts 2 verse 38, we have representatives in many regions around the world. Just contact the nearest regional office listed in Tomorrow's World magazine or contact us at tomorrowsworld.org. The Apostle Peter gave us encouragement and a warning. 2 Peter 3 verse 11. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. My friends, thank God that He is just and fair. As we saw earlier in the program, even the wicked sinners of ancient Sodom and Gomorrah will have an opportunity for salvation in the white throne judgment. You need to study your own Bible for encouragement and truth concerning hell, salvation, and the hope of the resurrection. There is hope for family and friends whom you thought may be lost, and there is hope for billions of people who never heard the true gospel and the name of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Be sure to request your free copy of this amazing booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? You'll find wonderful hope and encouragement from your own Bible. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World or watch us online at any time. In the challenging and stressful times in which we live, you need the solid guidance that comes from your Bible. Gerald Weston, Wallace Smith, and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ, the good news of the coming Kingdom of God, and the exciting end time prophecies and their meaning. So be sure to join us again next week right here at this same time. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.